many of us wonder how we can ignite the spark in us. When I reflected on that, before we ignite the spark, we need to develop escape velocity. Now, I know that you all and as teachers know about escape velocity. But I am going to give it to you in the context of igniting the spark. Everybody knows the definition of escape velocity. What is escape velocity? Escape velocity is basically the minimum velocity that is required for any object to overcome the gravitational forces. But what we don't realize is that each one of us, whether you are youth or an adult, we have our own gravitational forces that pull us down. As I reflected, I found out that there are about five big gravitational forces that pull anybody down from him or her reaching their full potential or really getting sky is the limit. And I am going to talk about those five gravitational forces. What are they? The first one is our understanding of the concept of excellence. The second one is the whole idea of the principle of maximum effort. The third one is understanding that performance happens under optimum pressure. And the fifth one, fourth one is we don't realize that our hidden assets are actually hindering us. And finally, passion will make up for lack of resources. So let me take you through the first one. The first one is on understanding excellence. I want to give a slightly twist to that definition. Excellence is not being the best. Instead, excellence is being your best. Understanding that difference will make all the impact in the world. That small difference will make a big impact. Let me go back and ask you a question. Supposing the definition of excellence is being the best, how many people in the world can be excellent? Only one. But supposing the definition of excellence is being or doing your best, how many people can be excellent? Everybody. I happen to be a valedictory function speaker in one of the schools. And after the speech, I had used this concept. One parent came to me and she said, sir, your speech was excellent. I said, thank you. And then she said, can my son be excellent? You said, everybody can be excellent. Can my son be excellent? I said, sure, ma'am. Your son can definitely be excellent. Immediately, she translated that in her own terms. And she said, can my son come first in class? I know that I did not say that, but her definition of excellence was very different. So I said, definitely, ma'am, your son can come first in class. She was quite excited. She wanted to look for her son. Shaitan, where are you from? Sir, you have not seen my son. You have not even seen my son and you said he can come first in class. I said, ma'am, I don't have to see your son. I don't have to interact with him. Immediately, she reiterated once again, Sir, my son, that monkey fellow, can he come first in class? I said, yes, he can definitely come first in class. She folded her hands and she almost knelt down and asked me a very searching question. And that question was, Sir, how long will it take and what must I do for my son to come first in class? I simply said, Ma'am, you just have to put your son the class where there's only one student. Will he come first in class? Most certainly. The unfortunate reality is our neighborhood, our parents and to some extent our teachers also encourage the one who is first in class based on a definition of being the best instead of encouraging each one of us to do our best. 
That's the first gravitational force that is pulling you down. Excellence means matching your practice with your potential. The second gravitational force is the principle of maximum effort. And here I'm going to ask all of you to do an exercise in a minute. The principle of maximum effort basically says that people put in their best effort or they don't put in their best effort despite their best intentions. They put in their best effort under compulsion. And I'm going to demonstrate that just now. I want all the audience to please stand up. Okay. The principle of maximum effort says people don't put in their best effort despite their best intentions. They put in their best effort under compulsion. So I want all of you to just do one simple activity. Raise your hands as high as you can. Okay. Now raise higher. What happened to you the first time? You can sit down. I hope all of you realized where the catch was. When I asked you to raise your hand as high as you can, did you actually raise your hand as high as you could? No. I just said, now raise higher. And what did you do? You raise higher. I'll give you variations of this principle of maximum effort. A large number of you are students. How many of you would put in your best effort on all your subjects if there were no exams? Let me ask that question once again. How many of you would put in your best effort on all your subjects if there were no exams? Exams is the compulsion. I'll give you another variation. The road outside our school, whatever you call that road, I ask all of you to run on that road as fast as you can. Scenario 1. Scenario 2. I ask all of you to run on that road as fast as you can. And after a few minutes, I will send a cheetah behind you. In which case, will you run as fast as you can? No prizes for guessing that one. I come from a family which is ancestrally very wealthy. A lot of gold was there in the family. A lot of land was there. My grandfather, he assembled me, my elder sister and one of my cousins. And then he told us this. We have enough wealth in the family for all of us to eat and your generation, your gen children, their children to eat very comfortably. But any day you eat without putting sweat on the ground, you are not worthy of the meal. We need to have a compulsion to keep us going. And money is not that compulsion. We need to have a purpose in life that is larger. So the principle of maximum effort says that we put in our best effort because of a compulsion, not because of our intention. That is the second gravitational force. But that compulsion should be optimum. And that is what is the principle of the pressure cooker. People perform best under optimum pressure and I'm sure you've heard of this word eustress and what is eustress? Eustress is basically that optimum pressure. So if you look at the graph there, on the x-axis you've got the stimulus or the motivation and on the y-axis you've got the productivity or the behavioral efficiency and if you look at it, if the or pressure is very less, the performance is very less. At the same time, on the other end of the spectrum, if the pressure or the motivation is very high, the productivity is also less. The job of a teacher, the job of a manager in the office is to provide that optimum pressure, optimum stress, so that our students can bloom to their full potential. Now, unfortunately, here it's not easy because it's not one size fits all. A teacher will know the capacity and the potential of a student. So his or her job is to provide that stimulus enough for him or her to bloom. That you stress is necessary. My mentor way back in 1984, he said this. 
Anand, I don't want to place a crown on your head because your head will become heavy. But I want to place a crown a few inches above your head and I want you to grow into it. Let us provide that you stress compulsion for our students so that they can really come out with their full potential. The fourth gravitational force that we all have to realize is the concept that hidden assets can actually be hindering. We all know the story of the elephant. What is the story of the elephant? How is a baby elephant tied? With a small rope. How is an adult elephant tied? Again with a small rope. Can the adult elephant break free? Yes. Will the adult elephant break free? No. Why? Because of another asset. The elephant has got another asset. It's not that obvious. And what is that asset? In fact, if somebody has got that asset, we say the person has got an elephant's memory. So, there is another asset which is hindering its obvious asset. Scientists say that an elephant can remember from moments when it was born. So, it knows that when it tried to pull the leg as a baby, there was a pain. And just like the elephant, we all have something in us, which actually is an asset, but will hinder us from putting our best effort. My boss used to say, whenever I want a difficult thing to be done, I will not hire a genius. Because that fellow will come out with a scientific reason why it cannot be done. We all have our assets. But are our assets progressing or hindering? Like the elephant, its asset of a memory is hindering its own strength. But let me tell you one thing. That same elephant will use its obvious asset, its strength, under two circumstances. One circumstance is when its loved one or its master's life is in danger. That same elephant will use the strength break free from that chain and go and save the situation. But the second situation is what I want to bring my fifth gravitational force. And that fifth gravitational force, which is actually pulling us down, is what the elephant will have when it is using its strength. So there is one word in the Persian language, which actually is borrowed into Urdu, and is also used in Hindi. It is the same word for madness and extreme passion. Can somebody in the audience tell me what is that word? Pagalpan is madness. Junoon, thank you. Whoever the student is, give them a good hat. Junoon is the word that we need to have. We need to have Junoon. But the lesson that we learn from the elephant is our hidden asset is actually more powerful and let us look at that madness and passion. As a teacher, you need to look at the children and see if they have got that spark in their eye. If they have that junoon. And what does junoon basically say? The definition of junoon is extreme madness and extreme passion. John Maxwell went on to say that passion will make up for lack of resources. My dear children, are you having those gravitational forces that are pulling you down? Are you having that wrong understanding of excellence? Are you still under the pressure of being the best instead of doing your best? But you will reach the sky. You will be able to ignite the spark if you can do your best on a daily basis. And the second one is for you to understand that you need to have your own compulsion. And that compulsion is not what you have as an external one. It has to come internally within you. You must have that fire in the belly and you must drive. But having said that, the pressure that you need to have is optimum pressure. And you must have a mentor, somebody who knows your strength, 
somebody who knows your potential and keeps on putting you on that edge to produce that you stress so that you can come out with your maximum potential. But having done that, realize that there can be some assets in you which can actually hinder you. Like the elephant, the hidden asset can actually hinder us. But ultimately, what makes the mark is our passion. Passion will make up for lack of resources. And as Steve Jobs said, if you have all this, you'll be able to make a dent in the universe. Thank you.